Hi, welcome to Boat Building in Upstate New York. I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks and we're building a 41 foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our Upstate New York home. Now she was designed with the home builder in mind and once complete she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. The last big job on our punch list before we can start the side planking is to add another layer of plywood to the transom. Remember our hull is composite planked, meaning that it's going to get a layer of standard traditional solid wood white oak planking followed by two layers of plywood. We already have the solid wood planking on the transom and before we start side planking I want to add another layer of plywood there. This will allow us when we do the side planking to let those solid wood planks run right past the end of the transom. Once all the solid wood planking is on the sides and on the bottom, we'll come back and install the final layer of finished plywood on the transom, and then we can move on to adding the plywood to the sides and the bottom. In my mind, this process is very similar to a shingle style house where you weave the corners overlapping material which blocks the ingress of water. Now obviously we have layers of tar and then with the plywood they will be epoxied into a monolithic skin, but putting actual physical structure between the water and the boat is a good idea in my mind. The installation of the first layer of plywood going over the solid wood planking is a pretty shippy process. We use copper naphthenate as a wood preservative and tar to help keep water out of the joints. With the second layer of plywood, that will be epoxied onto the first to create that monolithic skin I spoke of earlier. I didn't really worry too much about the alignment of the planks. We just ran those through the planer. We didn't really surface them to be flat. I knew once I added the plywood and the screws and the bolts that it would pull everything flush. I did use some aluminum bar stock as washers. I cut them into squares and drilled a hole in them and then used a little bit longer screws to drive them into position and pull those boards and the plywood together. And then I could come back and use our installation screws to complete the assembly. Once all the screws were installed tying that piece of plywood to the solid wood planking, I could install the last of the keel bolts and they will tie that transom knee to the actual transom. And I wanted to have that plywood in position so we had a lot of physical connection between the knee, the bolt, and the transom.
the rest of the time I've just been knocking off all these small jobs that I've been putting off saying well I have to get it done before I start planking but here we are so they do need to get done and that involved adding some bolts to the raised shear section of the aft part of the boat, cutting off pieces of the gusset that were going to interfere with the planking, reinstalling bolts that I had taken out to facilitate installing the chine, and on and on it went. Added a few more screws to the chine itself to tie it to the knee, and then we moved on to start laying out where the actual chine was going to fit. In theory, if you ran an invisible line along the bottom of each frame, it would pass through the chine and where it exited would leave a two inch reveal that would make up the chine around the entire length of the boat. And as you might expect of a first time boat builder, theory did not work out in the real world. So what I did is I made a jig that would allow me to transfer that invisible line from the bottom frames through the chine and I was able to make a mark and then take a measurement and see how things were lining up so that we had a nice fair curve. If things didn't line up perfectly, I defaulted to the plans to allow for that two inch reveal. Down the road, we'll have to add material to the build stringers or the frames to make that mark align and keep that fair curve, but I would prefer to add material than take material away. The planking process is going to put a lot of stress on our laminated white oak stem, so I wanted to get some through bolts installed there. These are just galvanized 5 8 inch, 12 inch long bolts. We were careful to install some caulking cotton underneath the heads of the washers to keep water out. And I only installed three now because when we put our keel shoe on, I think that's uh, obviously going to bend up around the stem. And I'm still contemplating if I want to through bolt that keel shoe on the stem through the stem entirety. So we have to decide that later on down the road, but at least we have three in for now to start our planking process. I know it's not the best way, but it's my way. I get bored and I like to skip around doing different jobs. So we still had work to do on the transom, adding the side panels, and the process is essentially the same. They're just a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, with all the snow, I couldn't get the sheet goods back there on my vehicle, and I wasn't going to lug an entire 80-pound sheet of plywood out there. So I created the templates on the transom and then went out and finished the work out in the driveway. Praise in the military for these combined problems was leadership challenge.
Of course, no video is complete without some total boat epoxy work, and we continue on working with our tanks and our heated shop, getting our five coats of epoxy on the cutouts for the baffles of each of the water tanks, and we continued on with final assembly for both tanks. We use plenty of thick so and regular unthinned epoxy for the assembly. And then I'm very pleased with using that thick so on the inside of the tank to soften those inside corners. Like we've said before, no finish likes sharp corners and epoxy is no different. So we want to ease those corners inside before we apply the glass tape and several more coats of epoxy. I am of course a big fan of the belt and suspenders approach to assembly so in addition to the epoxy I like to use some 316 stainless steel staples to help reinforce all the joints. Now you can see why we took the time to round over the exterior pieces of the frame and the bottom panel on each tank and that's so we could come back and install some fiberglass cloth and epoxy. Obviously these tanks will be in the bilge and exposed to moisture and water and we want to make them as resilient as possible. This process also adds a lot of strength and waterproofing to each tank so it's a good choice to do either way. Once the epoxy fully cures, we'll come back and sand it and then use a couple more Total Bolt products to prime and then paint. And that should make for a nice long life for this tank. I picked up a couple of 1956 DeWalt radial arm saws off a guy on Facebook for 75 bucks and even though I'm a Milwaukee guy you really can't pass up an opportunity like that. Having a radial arm saw will make a lot of our work in the future for some uh, data work on longitudinals will make it much much easier. Obviously they need some cleanup work and some lubrication. One of the motors definitely needs a bearing but I'm going to replace all the bearings on both motors and I think one of the motors needs a capacitor but the parts are still readily available and you really can't beat the quality of these old tools. Radial arm saws kind of get a bad name as being dangerous and that's because the modern equivalents just don't have the strength in the arm and they tend to flex when you're cutting and can ride up on the wood and be a little bit dangerous but these old tools are all cast iron, they're rock solid and they're pretty highly regarded so I'm actually looking forward to restoring them and putting them back into service.
Well, I was really hoping to have more to show you on the cutting of the chine to its rough final shape. Uh, I tried a few different methods with a circular saw, with a jigsaw, with a reciprocating saw, and they were either painfully slow or I had to stand really awkwardly and I thought I was going to kill myself. So my new plan is to utilize the chainsaw with a handle on the bar on the outfeed side. And I think with two people working together, we can handle that rolling bevel as it goes around the boat. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We want to leave plenty of material to address the issues we have with the alignment of the bottom frames. Um, so I think that will be the most effective way to efficiently do it safely. And in the next video, I hope to have uh, some actual footage of that process. So fingers crossed. Otherwise, our punch list to get to the actual first layer of white oak planking is pretty much ready to go. We have a few small things to do. Our water tanks here are in frame. Obviously, some work to do on the exterior and with the baffles. But we should be shaping up to have a pretty productive winter. Um, we hope folks will go and check out the description in this video where you can find a link and a discount code that you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown has been a big supporter of ours and we're very grateful for that. We hope our viewers will support companies that help support the Sea Dreamer Project, so please go check them out. We hope folks will go and check out our social media sites. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like those pages so you can follow along as we work in real time. You know we love hearing from people, so you can leave a comment below. But if you have a question that you really want to have it answered, probably the best thing to do is to send me an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com. I don't always get to read all the comments or I might miss something, and I don't want people to think that I'm ignoring them. So if you want to make sure your question gets answered, uh, that's probably the best way to do it. We also hope folks will check out the link that's either next to or below this video to our merchandise store over at Teespring. Uh, we've updated the design. I actually used some new software to uh, create a much more high quality image and hopefully there's an image being overlaid right now. The results came out really, really well. I'm very pleased and I hope in the next couple days we'll have an announcement for a discount code that you can use on Black Friday to still help support the project but save yourself some money. That's a win-win for everybody and uh, hopefully I'll have that announcement soon. And if you want to learn more about the project and all the steps that we've taken to get to this point, you can go over to our website at www.cdreamerproject.com. Lots of pictures and commentary over there for you to review. And of course, your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.